In this first video, we're going to be providing some basic terminology and definitions that we're going to be using throughout the rest of this course. Now, the first word that we're going to define is just what, are, what is the definition of statistics? Now, there are a couple different definitions that we could use. Uh, the first one from our textbook, Statistics for Business Economics by McClave et al. Uh, defines statistics as the science of data, and it involves collecting, classifying, summarizing, organizing, analyzing, and interpreting numerical and categorical information. Now, there are other, several other definitions that we could use for defining statistics. Another one uh, from Wikipedia is it defines statistics as a branch of mathematics dealing with the collection, analysis, interpretation, presentation, and organization of data. So basically looking at both of those definitions and kind of putting them together, we see that statistics is the science and mathematics behind both the gathering and interpreting of data. So how do we gather that information? How do we interpret that information? And how do we present that information in a meaningful way? Now we can, pro we can break up statistics into basically two different flavors. Uh, we have descriptive statistics. And we have inferential statistics. Now descriptive statistics is basically how do we summarize or describe any given set of data. So this could be in a graphical representation, maybe in a pie chart or a bar chart. It could be written out, maybe in just like a paragraph form, a summary of that data. Or we could present that descriptive information in like a numerical summary. Like what's the mean of the data, what's the median, what's the standard deviation, and so on. Now we also have inferential statistics, which is basically taking all that data and making predictions or estimates or creating some way of making a decision based on that data. So one of the most common ways that we see inferential statistics used is we take historical information and we use that information to project into the future. So maybe we've seen this trend in stock prices and with this kind of background and we project, project that it's going to happen this way in the next month or two. So and that's how we kind of break statistics down. We have the descriptive piece, how do we summarize the information, and we have the inferential piece. What's the next step? How do we figure out what's going to happen in the future? So now that we have those two different flavors of statistics, let's look at some of the basic foundational elements of statistics. So we're going to talk about our elements. And the first element that we're going to talk about is just the experimental or observational unit. So we're going to say the experimental unit. And the experimental unit is basically an object, which can be a person, a thing, a transaction, or any other type of event, upon which we collect data. So for example, this might be an individual, and then we're gonna collect different pieces of information about that given individual. Or maybe a financial transaction, maybe a particular company's stock price as it goes throughout the day. We also have what's called our population. And the population is the set of units, usually people, objects, transactions, or events, so a set of experimental units that we're interested in studying. So this might be the entire world's population, or maybe it could be the population of a school, or it could be the population of the Fortune 500, and so on. What group of exper experimental units are we actually interested in studying? We also have variables. And variables are basically the characteristics or properties of an individual in that population that we're looking to study. So a variable might be if we're looking at the population of a school and we're looking at each of the experimental units or each of the students in that school, a variable might be how tall is that person, how much does that person weigh, what's that person's major, and so on. Now, for most studies, we can't actually study the entire population. Uh, maybe that's due to uh, cost. It costs too much to get all that information. Maybe it's just hard to get all those people together in one particular location to gather that information and so on. Uh, so since we can't usually study that full population, we usually have to break it down into what is called a sample. 
and a sample is just a subset of the units of a population. So maybe the sample could be a particular classroom, or maybe it could be a particular grade, or a particular year group, or maybe just even a major in a school. We also have our statistical inference. And the statistical inference is basically, as we described before when talking about inferential statistics, is the estimate or prediction of some or some other generalization about the population based off of the information we gathered from that particular sample. So maybe we looked at a given class and found that their height is has an average of 68 inches. And then we make an inference and assume that the rest of the population of the school has that same average height. And then the last element that we're going to cover, our foundational element that we're going to cover, is, base, is the measure of reliability. And the measure of reliability is just a statement, usually quantified, so usually with some error bounds or something along those lines about the degree of uncertainty associated with a statistical inference. So if we're using the height, again, as an example, we can say that we are making the inference that the average height of our school is 68 inches, and then we're gonna say maybe plus or minus three inches, and then we'll say with a 95% certainty. So we assume 95% of the time, the average height of the school will be plus or minus some given range, from what our sample size, sample told us the average height for the population was. Now that we've defined our foundational elements of statistics, let's see how they go along with our two different flavors of statistics. So let's first look at a descriptive statistics problem. And we have four major elements of a descriptive statistics problem. Now the first one that we're going to need to have is the population or sample of interest. So we have number one is we're going to need to define our population or our sample. Once we have that, once we have our population or sample, we need to then define what our variables of interest are. So what variables do we need to gather of that population or that sample? So number two is our variables. And then once we have our variables, our third step here is to summarize that data using maybe a graph or a table or some other numerical summary. So we're going to say number three from a descriptive statistics problem is summary tools. And finally, number four is just the identification or patterns in that data. So we're going to have number four is the identification Of patterns. So for a descriptive statistics problem, we're going to say the first thing that we're going to need to define is what is our population or sample of interest. So maybe a school or a, a classroom or maybe a company or a set of companies. And then we're going to need to define some variables that we're going to care about. So maybe that's height, weight, or gender. For a company, maybe that's stock price, number of employees, market capitalization, and so on. We then gather all that data and we summarize that information with some set of tools. Maybe we provide a graphical summary in a, in a chart or a plot, something along those lines. Maybe it's a numerical summary talking about the mean, median, and mode of that information, and so on. And then finally, for our final step for the descriptive statistics problem is just the identification of patterns. So we say we see this kind of trend in our information um, for older classes in a given school. Maybe their height or weight are higher on average than um, earlier classes. So maybe 12th grade has a higher height or weight than 9th grade and so on. The second type of problem that we're going to look at is an inferential statistics problem.
Now the first two elements of an inferential statistics problem are relatively similar to that of the descriptive statistics problem. The first one is we need to define the population of interest. And we'll see why we need to have just the population for number one um, in a second, but that is slightly different than the, the descriptive statistics problem where we could have the population or the sample. Number two is the same as the descriptive statistics problem where we're looking at the variables of interest. So again, what characteristics about an experimental unit do we actually care about? So that was the height, weight, age, things like that. Number three is the sample of the population. So the sample might be a class when we're looking at the population of an entire school. So something along those lines, some subset of the population. And this sample is where we're actually going to be gathering that data. So where we're gathering um, maybe height, weight, and age of a particular class when we're trying to look at the entire school is what we're interested in. Number four is the interest or the inference about the population. So number four is we're going to be creating some inference. And that inference might be um, we're going to assume the average height of the school is the same as the average height of our sample or so on. Some prediction as to what the data for some other um, set of um, experimental units or maybe some given set of time or a, a wider range of our population. And finally, number five for our inferential statistics problem is our measure of reliability. So how well do we think our inference is going to stack up against what we're actually going to observe? So what does our inference look like when we're comparing it to uh, what the actual outcome would be? So that measure of reliability is, again, perhaps some error range. We're going to say plus or minus some given percentage. And then we're going to say we have this level of confidence on our inference. 